So my aunt um, put a post on Facebook uh, wanting to know, you know, ideas for updating her armoire. So um, I wanted to show, do this video uh, and add it to my YouTube channel on, you know, what I did uh, uh, to update our armoire. Um, so essentially, this armoire started out um, looking just like that. So that's how it was stained, uh, like a, a golden maple color. Um, and so we obviously did some things to, to, to update it. So it was all, you know, that golden maple. Um, so we first started out wanting to darken the stain so that we can contrast it with a lighter uh, coat of paint. So there you got several options to darken your stain. So it's top coat coated with polyurethane and you can't just take a darker stain and apply it to polyurethane. It won't, um, the, the, the um, stain won't adhere to it. So what we did is we, there's, there's different products for applying onto polyurethane that you could use. So let me grab, the, I'll just kind of show you different options that you can do. Um, so this first one's poly shade. So what this is, it's essentially polyurethane with dye in it. The only thing with it, so I did a test of this, and it just doesn't apply consistently with the grain of your wood grain. So it's it's almost like applying a coat of paint to your um, to your your uh, polyurethane finished surface. Um, so it's something you can test out to, for darkening. It will darken it, but it may not look like it may may look more like something that's painted yet transparent. You'd have, to, you'd have to apply it and see what you think of it. The second one, I didn't know about this until after um, I've done, I did this is, um, so this is, uh, can't really see it because it's kind of messy, but this is a Sherman William, Williams uh, oil stain. And this actually applies to over your polyurethane and will apply consistent with the wood grain. So it'll look like you're just staining it. This is pretty good stuff here. Um, I use this to darken a frame. Um, so what we ended up, and I don't have an example to show you here, is uh, something called gel stain. So gel stain is urethane base. Urethane will adhere to polyurethane. So essentially it will stain your polyurethane, but it won't um, stain it consistent with the wood grain. And to really kind of highlight that, I'll show you here, our cedar chest, we, we, we also um, gel stained it so it was consistent with the rest of the furniture that we updated in the room but you can see how it kind of applies it's like it's real splotchy uh, again it doesn't apply the stain consistent um with the with the wood grain so it's not going to look like stain but it, it this cedar chest does have an, an antiquish look to it because of the gel stain so gel stain does kind of give it this cool look to it um an aged look so gel stain is what we ended up doing so again, the gel stain turned it from that. We use a dark gel stain. It changed it changed it from a golden maple like that over there, like the rocking chair, into the color you see up there. So once I gel stained it, then I top coated it with polyurethane, as I was talking about. So I just wanted to a little bit of spider web on there. Got to sell this shed. So um, polyurethane it. Um, I typically do like two coats of polyurethane. Sometimes you see recommendations to do three coats, but you do more than one coat uh, in order to give it a consistent look. So, so gel staining it is just a matter of you apply the gel stain, let it sit. I think for two minutes, you just follow the directions of the can, wipe off the gel stain, um, and it'll leave that look that you see up there. Then you go through. Well, I think you you you're gonna just slightly sand it with uh, uh, 150 grain sandpaper um, and then wipe it down. So you can wipe the, 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 um, the sanded residue off and then um, apply your first coat of um, polyurethane. So polyurethane, just make sure you, you apply it down with a, a foam brush, spread it out quickly, get, you know, get the excess residue off um, and then move on and apply it in, in another area. Maybe do one, you know, uh, one little area at a time. And then also you're checking back throughout the whole time you're applying polyurethane. You're checking back at the other areas because you'll get runs along the, the corners 
and, and stuff. So you just want to look for those little drips and stuff and just come back and just kind of lightly hit them with the, with the brush. Um, but be very careful again. <laughs> Okay, so um, so that's the first color polyurethane. So once you the you follow the cans on you know how long it takes the polyurethane to cure. So once it cures, do the sand down again, wipe off the residue again, and then apply that second coat of polyurethane. Um, if that second coat of polyurethane looks good, I, I'd go with that. I so once you have your stain work done. Um, you know, you're going to move on to painting. So you're going to paint the, obviously in this case, I painted this, the uh, center part of, of the armoire. And so when, whenever you're going to paint it, first of all, you gotta, you're going to have to prime it. Um, and so the, the key thing is, is when you're going into the phase of priming and painting, uh, you have to consider, okay, am I, am I going to spray it or am I going to, you know, brush and roll it? So if you if you brush and roll it, you know you can use the one of these little. Well, this one's a little old, <laughs> but uh, one of these these are very common um, in the home improvement stores. Um, these little foam rollers um, do a pretty good job uh, of applying the paint um, without any texture. And that's the key when you're painting furniture. You don't really want a texture. You want it to look um, kind of solid. Uh, so the foam rollers do pretty good. Uh, um, you know you want to get a um, a high-end paintbrush as well um, but either way whether you do the, the, the roller or the paintbrush um, it, it's going to leave some texture um, so then you gotta decide okay do I am I fine with that or do I want to use a sprayer and so um, if you get any of the the kind of the home use sprayers paint sprayers um, you're going to have to dilute the paint down and the primer down. Um, and I recommend, you know, getting the sprayer, um, testing it out on scrap, you know, cardboard, you know, wood, whatever, uh, to see if, um, you know, to dilute it down, try to get that right blend because you don't want it to sputter and it'll, it'll goop up on your surface and totally ruin uh, any of the work that you've done. You'd have to kind of wash it all down and start all over again. So you don't want to do that. Um, uh, you want to definitely test your, your sprayer out and get that right consistency. Typically with my sprayer, I, it's probably about a 1% or 2% amount of um, water that I'm mixing in just to, just to lighten the, the solution up or thin it out enough to, to where I can use the sprayer. Um, so yeah, again, you're going to start out with the primer. Before you prime, though, you will have to sand it down, especially for the... Um, Maybe not so much if, if, if it's not co top coated with polyurethane, but it is, if it is top coated with polyurethane, you are going to want to uh, sand it down and, um, um, and then obviously clean that residue off um, to give it more surface area for that paint to or the primer to adhere to. Um, you know, apply the primer and then you'll probably end up doing two coats of paint. And with the sprayer, you may or may not have to do two coats of paint. It just depends. You, you have to be the judge for yourself on that. Now with the paint, you can make it um, a lot easier to finish this thing off um, depending on the type of paint you use. So uh, Sherman Williams makes what they call emerald urethane trim enamel. And so that's their most expensive paint. And it's a trim paint. And the, what makes it different is, is that when it cures, it hardens, so it essentially creates a shell around whatever you painted. Um, so that's important for something like a piece of furniture or armoire where you're using a light, bumping into, opening the doors, all that. Um, because if the paint is just a something you slap on, like you use on the wall, it's not going to be good enough. Um, so you're going to want to um, use, and that's the only one I'm aware of that you know, right out of the can is, you know, cures and, and has a hardened shell. Um, but if you don't do that, and I did not know about that type of paint when I painted this. So when I painted this, I just used regular paint for it. So if you use regular paint, um, what you have to do to protect it is use something that I actually, I really do like this product, poly acrylic. Uh, because I've used it on several pieces of furniture that we've redone. So we have a piece of furniture that's 13, yeah, it's about, um, yeah, about 13 years old. 
we polycrylic it and it's a laminate so it's not even what it's laminate you know how paint really doesn't stick to that really well um but we um we polycrylic it and it provided that uh protective shell essentially it's like this hardened uh coat of plastic um around your paint so it's like it's a shell um and so if you do not use a good quality paint, then you're going to have to polycrylic it once you are done painting. So with polycrylic, um, you'll use a roller and a brush. And again, it's like you apply it. It's very wet when you apply it, um, very watery. So you'll want to spread it out real well. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, you'll just play it, apply it right onto the paint. You, uh, you won't do anything to the paint to, to prep it. Um, other than, you know, if the if it's been a while, you probably want to wipe down the paint. But um, So you'll apply it on top of your painted surface. Um, once you're done, um, you will, um, again, have to sand it down to, just to, to scratch it up. Remove, well, wipe it down to get the residue off and then apply it, the polycrylic again. And you'll want to apply... Or polycrylic you want to put three coats of polycrylic on summarize um so for areas that i kept stained top and bottom actually we did the shelves as well um i just darkened them so they would contrast real nicely with a light uh, coat of paint uh for the paint paint it probably two coats of paint and then if you didn't use the the sherman williams paint that i mentioned then you're going to want to polycrylic it three coats and if you do that, you will have, um, um, it, it'll be rock solid. It'll, it'll, it'll you got to make sure you have a protective coat on it and it should be good to go. So by painting your, your furniture, maybe give them a, this look that we've got going here. Um, you can, you, you can kind of match it up with other furniture in the house that it didn't, it didn't match up to. So for example, we, we redid our dresser here. So we did the same thing on the top, um, to darken it up and um, paint it the same color and all another thing is just uh, updating the hardware so as you can see we updated the um the, the door knob or the knobs on it uh, they were like a, i think they were a wood knob or something like that same thing here we did like a brass finish just to, to match up the furniture so i hope that helps